Hello, everyone. This was an amazing, inspiring journey through all these fights. Um, I'm so happy to be here with you, Casey, and to be able to share our experiences in Brazil. I felt like I was there. Many of the images that we see are the same that we see here in the Amazon in Brazil. So I'm truly inspired and thankful for all of your work and your fight and to the producers as well of the Condor and the Eagle. It is amazing to be able to show these stuff that we see in Amazon and in other parts of the world, to share this with many parts of the world. It's amazing. I'm very excited about this panel with all these amazing women. And uh, I feel my heart beating. I am very emotional because uh, today here with us is Maya Lu Wauratu Kahamai, which is an indigenous women leader. She's the granddaughter of Chief Haoni. And uh, her mother, Kamiha Waura, will be presenting us with a, a ritual to start our panel today. Uh, so joining us together with Casey Kemp Honrick is also Mayana Nell from Sustain Us, that I'm really glad to have here with us. Alejandra Piazzola, Extinction Rebellion. Uh, when Maya Lu uh, speaks, we will be hearing it in, in Portuguese. Uh, so if you want to listen to Pisa, who is to translate so that you can be able to understand everything she says. So there's a button right here in the bottom that says interpretation, and you should choose English if you can if you want to hear Pachi translating Maya Lu. Okay. So thank you very much for being here tonight. And now I'm gonna pass to Kamiha who is the mother of Maya Lu and is together with her in Lu. Yeah. Maya Lu, pode começar com, com a Kamiha e depois você segue a sua fala, tá bom? Mai Kamiha. É isso, é... Can you hear me? Antes de mais nada, quero agradecer também imensamente a... Before anything, I want to... ...poder estar aqui hoje. 
para participar desse evento sobre a percepção e a perspectiva dos povos indígenas é, com relação à justiça climática e é, a crise climática. E a crise climática, que é um problema de todos. E esse problema nós devemos enfrentar juntos. Como in this problem, we face together with brothers and sisters, sons of Israel. My name is Maya Kayapó e Maya. And we live in the mountains of the Xingu. The indigenous territory is the biggest indigenous territory in the world. And that's where I lived my childhood. And learned how to respect nature. Respect everything that exists in nature. moment. Pois bem, this territory, the indigenous land, it's practically a island. And the Destroying of, of nature. Destroying has, has been threatening my people. This destroying of the forest happens because of agriculture, factory expansion. Uh, just a moment. 
So it looks like uh, Patsy, who is doing the interpretation, has uh, internet problems. So I'm going to suggest that, uh, Casey, if you could understand a little bit of what Maya Lu was bringing, maybe we could go for you and check with Patsy her connectivity, and then we come back to Maya Lu. Can it be? Maya, então eu vou passar para a Casey para ver se a Paty melhora a internet dela. Uhum. Aí eu vou descrevendo o que ela está falando e a gente volta para você depois, tá bom? Ok, Sem Casey. Problema. It's a really big pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for allowing me to be part of this panel. I appreciate it very much. Uh, I thank all of you for the joining together of our lives and the energies and for everyone taking time out of their lives to watch this film and and to uh, be part of this joining of this prophetic time of the condor and the eagle and it feels really good to hear my relatives from the southern hemisphere speak of what's going on there because we are joined by many things We're joined by the uh, grace of the great mystery, giving birth to us as indigenous peoples of our territory. And by the awesome responsibility and, and the uh, gift of being caretakers of the territories where we live. I'm coming to you right now from Oklahoma, which is in the middle of what they call the United States. Yeah. And uh, I live in the North Central area with my people. Panka is the name of our tribe. It means sacred head. We're peoples who first encountered the colonist uh, many generations back and made five treaties with them, with this federal government of the United States. All of them they broke, but we eventually had a forced removal from our home territories when my grandfather was eight years old and that was in the 1800s, in the late 1800s. My mother was the first born in captivity in this territory. And when she was born here, when When she was born here in Oklahoma, it was still prairie land. It was still the, the Southern Plains. And uh, we still had our gardens and our ways of life. The, the extractive industry, the oil and gas people had uh, found what they thought was something worth selling. Uh, like they had sold our, our people's territory in the beginning like they had sold the lives of our people and kidnapped them off to boarding schools, like they had sold everything else. They took the oil and gas from the body of our mother earth and began to sell that. And in doing so, they too have done what has happened to our peoples down in uh, your territory. They have created a poisonous place Of the, of the Mother Earth, of the Father Sky, of all the plants and the animals that are gone now, the ones that they killed. And they have created a situation where my people have a difficult time staying alive. We have lost much of our language. And now with this COVID, this illness coming among us, and we all live close together, then we have had to deal with that as well you know, with, with no ability to really have the things that are necessary for caretaking of, of our elders. And I'm one of those elders right now. And yet I look around me and I see many of our wisdom keepers going to the other side, going to the spirit world because of this illness. And so once again, we are losing many of our valuable people because I believe our bodies are compromised from this extractive industry's ways 
and what they have done to make us ill, cancers, respiratory problems, autoimmune diseases, children with asthma. And it's a difficult thing to, to watch when we hear what's going on in other parts of our mother earth with other indigenous people. And yet at the same time, there's a great deal of hope because I see these young women, all of these young women on this panel who have the ability to communicate and the desire to lead and will be part of this uh, way that these prophecies pull us back into a time of male and female balance and male and female being able to work together to reclaim what was the sacred system of life that once endured among our peoples. We're very grateful at this time uh, that we have this ability to communicate across these great distances with this, this thing uh, called a webinar, which we kind of consider to me being like a web of life, a web of communication that hasn't existed in many generations. In, in our traditional language, in the language of my people, we have many stories of our warriors traveling way far south. We have words in our language of the brightly colored birds and of the monkeys and the things that only could have happened along those original trade routes. So we know that our people are connected throughout history and that they will be continuing to be connected in the histories to come. So what we do when we see your generation rising up and leading and teaching is try to do our best to uphold your voices. And I, I would appreciate it if there are any questions that you'd like to ask at this time. Hi, my name is Mayana and I am a part of Sustain Us. And again, I'm so thankful and honored to be in this virtual room with you, Casey. Um, and thank you for your words and your knowledge. Um, and my question is surrounded in how do you, what does storytelling and this traditions mean to you in the power of igniting your community and others and other youth? And how has storytelling and song um, played a part in your activism and in your, in your fight? Well, Casey, you are on mute, Casey. <laughs> Got it. I thank you. I think with every story that's shared between us, uh, we connect some of that broken chain that has been, um, don't know how to, the colonists have tried to divide us. But with the stories that we share with one another, with the getting to know one another through these ways, then we empower each other. I will forever have your image, your face, your voice in my mind, my thoughts, and my prayer. And prayer is the strongest thing that connects us because each of us has our original ways of thought that were placed in, in this Mother Earth plane by the great mystery. And through the connection of our ceremonies, like the one we just had, I will remember that song, the way that she said the words, even though the language might be different, I felt it in my spirit and my heart. And as a people of oral tradition, I remember the stories of my mother and father I didn't know my grandparents. They died young because of the trail of tears that we walked on. But at the same time, I know their stories and I know their generations before them and my ancestors before them because their stories came down in many ways, sitting around the campfires at night and listening to the stories through the songs of my people, even though they tried to kill our language the songs endured and within those songs are histories. Today, 
I was being lonesome uh, because I'm not able to be around my grandchildren and great grandchildren right now. And my, even my brothers that are elders as well as myself, we can't get together the way that we have been. We can't have the same ceremonies. Today actually is the day every year that our women's society ordinarily uh, dances. We feed a mourner's meal. We come together and honor uh, our ancestors and the warriors and we give away and we feast together. This year we can't do that. So I was on this internet thing and I'm actually pretty new at all this. So it's fun for me to, to look around here and, and that's what it feels like. I feel like I'm just viewing things. And I found a song that I had asked uh, a long story, but I found a song that uh, was created for my brothers by a man in our tribe named Jim Kimball. And my brothers are, are AIM warriors. My brothers are uh, Wounded Knee veterans. And, uh, and to see them and to hear that song again and to look at all those people that were dancing around the sacred drum on that day many years back revived in me part of the reason that we call ourselves activists these days because that didn't exist you know when we were young we did what we did because it's an honor and a responsibility and a duty to keep our ways alive despite the colonist attempt to continue to kill us. We live, we rise, we are, and we will be. Thank you so much, Casey. Um, I'm going to try to come back to Maya Lu because I see so much of what you're saying in, in the reality that they live as well. So I think there's a lot to exchange. And for me, it's like, the perfect name of the movie because the condor and the eagle represent exactly this meeting and this sum of strengths that we have to do and for us is part of this new future that we want to free so uh, let us try to listen to mayalu again please um, you can write us in the chat if you cannot hear uh, well again, but I think now we have better internet connection with Patricia. So, uh, Maya, vamos voltar para você então, agora que a Paty está com internet boa? Pronto? Posso? É, então, uma, é uma grande honra revê-la, rever a. So it's a great honor to be able to see Casey, to see Casey again, and the our, my sister in the fight. And it's a great honor to be able to to speak here because when we met in 2013, she taught me a lot. She taught me how white people, how non-indigenous people, owners of great, of big companies and governments uh, trick indigenous people. And it was, I learned a lot. It was a lot of learning. Um, and also with also watching the movie Patricia Gualingua uh, from Ecuador. Anyways, I was talking about our trajectory of fighting uh, against Belo Monte, which is a hydroelectric plant. This fight, we fought since 1989. My people together with other other peoples that uh, were also going to be affected by the plant, we were able to paralyze to stop the building of the plant. 
but in 2010, they, they started again uh, with a new name, Belo Monte. And since then, when I was a child, when I was a, still a baby, my people, my father, my grandparents were, all, were already fighting against the hydroelectric power plant uh, in our river. And when, when I was young, I also took upon myself this fight in defense of our territory, in defense of our people, in defense of our rivers and forests. Belo Monte uh, was built. The government pressured and pushed the power plant into our people. And after Belo Monte, the consequences of the greed uh, only grows. And now we're facing threats of invasion. From um, gold miners, we're facing threats of mining for mining projects from a Canadian uh, company. So these, these are our challenges to keep our way of living and to, to keep our land. And also to keep the balance of the climate. I see that we indigenous people, we can't fight by ourselves. So that's why I call you to fight with us so we can together. So we can together stop, stop this change and stop this crisis, stop, stop the destroying of nature. We here from Brazil have been, we've been um, hidden. The government hides um, the cutting of forests and hides the, the abuse. And we, we indigenous people, Guayarás, she mentions all, all, all of the indigenous tribes who are getting together to stay enough, to stay stop invasions, stop deforestation, stop the government to, to make the government to rethink what they're doing. And now uh, the whole world is seeing the consequences of the destroying of nature, which is the appearance of diseases, the appearance of the COVID-19. This new disease, we've been facing this disease with a lot of wisdom, wisdom from our ancestors. We've been using traditional medicine Our cure comes from the earth. Our cure comes from nature. Our medicine are the plants and they've been keeping us alive. And using our traditional medicine is that is how we've been protecting ourselves and defending us ourselves against COVID-19. 
we had three victims of COVID-19 in our territory, the territory Capoche Jarina. In the territory of Xingu, we had more victims, but now not anymore. Now we've been defending ourselves with traditional medicine and the wisdom from our ancestors. And that's what was, that's what our peop, my people have been showing how to, to be in harmony with nature. I'm not asking anyone to stop living how they are already living, just to respect the people from the forest, respect indigenous people. Because we are the ones who have been keeping the climate in balance so far. We've been, we have been pressured. A lot of, we've been threatened. A lot of indigenous leaderships, uh, a lot of indigenous leaders have been killed. And I wanna remember these people that they had three leaders killed murdered for defending their land, their defending uh, mother nature. And we're all gonna pay for this. Everyone that kills the son of mother earth will suffer the consequences. And that's what, what we've been telling people, my grandfather has been telling people, Davi and Omami has been telling people, Ukrenaki in his books and texts have been teaching us the path. But it seems to me that humanity is, is blind, is blind, bl blind by greed and by power. But anyways, we're here today. I believe our thoughts are uh, directed towards preserving and defending our Mother Earth. And I say Mother Earth because it's, it's Mother Earth that gives us life. It gives us water to live. It gives us the land to plant our food and keep us alive. And that's it. What I have to say to you is that our way of living, our way of living from millennia, from a lot of years has survived until today. And our union, our togetherness of indigenous people from all the world needs, need, we need to come together and to create an alliance in defense of mother earth, in defense of our way of living. Like, like our sister has have told us, we're constantly grieving. And these these are the lessons that I'm that I'm teaching my children. I I learned from my mother, who is a page, a very strong page, who has protected me. And all that she's done since the beginning of this event. The, the song, the ritual that she performed in the beginning of this event is the song of Mother Earth. 
and she felt like singing this this song because we are in the front lines because we are in this fight for mother nature and we need a lot of protection and that's it strength for all of us for us women for youth and we are together in this that's what i have to say a big hug So let's go and listen to the questions that Alejandra might have. Uh, Ale was here with us in Xingu um, together with Matsi, actually Maya Lu. So she saw a lot about the, the fights that Maya Lu is speaking about. And I think she might have a, a lot of questions for Maya Lu as well. Ali? Hey, hello. Um, so before I, I ask my questions first, I just wanted to thank um, everyone and especially Maya Lu and KCSC that especially as younger people who are joining in this fight for, you know, for life, basically, we are really standing on the shoulders of the generations and generations before us who have fought for this. And I don't know where would we be right now if it wasn't people like you both who have been fighting really hard. So I'm just really grateful for all the work that you do. And that's um, the main thing I wanna say. And that recognizing that we have a lot to learn from you. And I think I especially realized that when I went to Shingu um, and something which was really, deeply inspiring is that I noticed that a lot of people did, at least here in Europe where I live, they did their activism out of fear, out of fear for the future, out of fear of what would have happened. But something that was really powerful and very beautiful from my experience um, in Shingu and meeting everyone is that it came from a place of love and out of love for other people, out of love for the land and I think when you fight from a place of love, it really gives you the strength to not give up. And I just wanted to ask you both who have been doing this for so long and facing much bigger challenges than I myself do from England, uh, trying to do this work, what gives you strength to keep going on? And that's my question for Bo Long and facing much bigger challenges than I myself do from England, uh, trying to do this work. What gives you strength to keep going on? And that's my question for both. Um, She's reading what, I, what we wrote to her, uh, translating um, Alejandra's message. Um, question and, and, to, and message. Yes, what gives me strength is um, first the heritage from my grandfather. My grandfather today has become part of the earth. Also what gives me strength today are my children. Um, the children from from indigenous lands because they are the future generation that will fight for the land that will fight for my grandfather for our ancestors and that will also defend me when i become part of nature that's what gives me strength These, the, the future generations are the ones that give me strength, the children of the earth. That's it. Obrigado. Casey, do you want to jump in? Yes. 
Sure. Uh, I will simply echo what she says. Those are the, the places that uh, give me strength as well. Uh, my, my mother was my great teacher and she was taught by her mother and, and father as well. So the ancestors and what they sacrificed and the way that they set us on a certain path and kept that alive through all the onslaughts of that, uh, of the ugly ones that came onto our continent. And then uh, being a, a woman among my peers, my other Ponca people and other tribal people helps me to sustain the joy of being indigenous. I'm, I'm really, uh, really happy when I get among other indigenous people. We don't have to say the same language because we, we share the same spirit and it flows directly from the one mother that we all share. And that's our mother, the earth. Our mother earth gives me strength and well-being. The breath that I share with the trees and uh, plants gives me strength. Uh, this uh, relative, the water, she's awesome. And I love her and she gives me strength. The words of my children that I learned from while I was um, on mute, one of my grandsons just came. He's uh, in 22 now, I believe, might be 21. And uh, we don't get to hug each other right now. He's been traveling a bit. And because of this illness out there, we're not hugging. But he came here because he had left one of his sacred instruments, his uh, his sacred pipe. And he felt alone without that because he, he has to have that feeling of connection with the sacredness of life. That gives me strength. I see that my generations to follow, male and female, are following the, this path that the ancestors set out. Seeing your faces and participating in today's panel gives me strength. And I'll tell you something that I want all of you young women to understand is that they talk about these big things that, that are going on, these terrible rapes of our mother, the earth, the way that they're digging in her flesh and her bones to extract those things that they find valuable, is that they're go gonna be gone and our people, our ways will continue. Their ways are already dying. They're just trying on their last means us as women and as humans that are part of nature, not separate from. So all those other things that those men create so they could have this fake thing they, they've created called money, these fake plastic cards, these uh, unsustainable ways that they are being destructive, those will eventually leave. But the true powers that we're connected to will always be. That gives me strength. Wibdaha, thank you. Thank you so much, Casey. And I feel myself like in so uh, gratitude to have both of you, you and Maya Lu here, because we see that we should be led by you women, not only indigenous. And for us, this is very important. And I think the best and the, the path that we should take is to again, combine these strengths and making sure that your fights and Maya Lu's fights are connected 
and this is something that we can do for you. So this is something that uh, we are here to be a, a platform to connect your fights and everything that is happening there together with what's happening in Xingu, for instance. Bellu Sun, as Maya Lu said, it's a company that comes from Canada. So how can we um, think together, think about strategies and join forces to make sure that we can be listened for not only in our states and countries, but the whole world. So I think this is the most uh, important meeting, meeting that has to happen right now with the indigenous people from all over the world to be followed by us, especially young women, but all of us who want to free the future. Do you have any other questions, Mayana? No, I'm just honored to be in the same room and hear these words. I mean, the only question I had other than um, the power of storytelling and music was how are you continuing to take care of yourself in a fight that um, is against you? Is that a fight where people are battling and are fighting against who you are as intrinsic intrinsically with your roots and your community and your family? How are you continuing to take care of yourself so you can be um, a leader for your community and for your people? I know personally that's something that has battled with the Black Lives Movement, um, with the movement that is trying to connect us as a community and help us grow. It's a certain amount of bonus that needs to happen to make sure that I can be there for my people and be there for my community. So I would love to know how you are continuing to take care of yourself and be connected to those strengths that um, Alejandra talked about before. Um, I will answer that um, if you don't mind. And then I, I apologize, but I'm gonna have to go to another place right now. Um, I, I think that the strength is innate. I don't think there's a magic wand. I think that we have to uh, recognize our strength, enjoy it and feel it and participate in it. I think that it's necessary every day, all the time to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The sun rose today. Thank you. Uh, we're blessed we have food. We have a roof over our head, but we share as well. We're a big family, we're a tribe, we're a people, and we're human. So we share whatever it is that we need to share. And that makes the circle go round. My mama, my our ways are that we have to always be grateful, that we always have to feed others, even if there's just a you know, a little pot of beans we got and some water that's going to sustain life. And we need to share it. And that way our generations will never be hungry. That's the way we're taught. I think also that those other ones are pitiful. They may not know it. And most often they don't. So we were taught that to pity them and to pray for them to pity them and to pray for them. In their ignorance, in their, their willful ugliness, they're pitiful. How is their generations gonna remember them? I know how my generations will remember me. I make sure of it every day, all the time. And the other thing is not to pity myself. I, I am blessed. I'm alive. I breathe. I eat. I drink. I have family. I have friends. I have tribe. I have relationship with all that is, with all that is. I have ceremony all the time, even if it's only internal, getting up in the morning, 
and seeing the sun rise and making a connection and, and a prayer for my loved ones every day. It's a good feeling to do that, you know, and to warrior up. You could, you could go ahead and deal and allow yourself to say, you know, uh, they're big, I'm small, but it's not true. They are the same as you. They've made wrong choices. You're making right choices. Be proud of yourself. Be that warrior woman. Who's going to deny you if you present yourself in that way? With love, with compassion, with strength, and that gives you the beauty of being who you are and connected to all. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Let me just add one question before you leave, and then we go from Casey to Ayalu. Uh, there are very similar questions about um, what can we do? Like there is Ian who is sitting at home in the UK watching the, the film, what he could do to help or solve these problems. Um, there is also from Leon that says that he loves to travel, but everything we do basically um, has an environmental and social cost. So in your opinions, what are the compromises and the solutions? So what can people do? Well, first and of Ali, if you want to add anything uh, before Casey leaves, I think it will be like a final round for the two of them. Um, I'm traveling right now. I'm traveling to Europe. I'm traveling to South America. I'm traveling all around Turtle Island and into the universe in this sacred manner. But I'm not inflicting harm. And so I think that our travel has to change. Our thought pattern has to change. Our connection way has to change. And it also needs to continue in the other way when that is possible to do in a good way. As far as what we can do is, is we start at home. You know, when I was a young, young woman in the 60s, there used to be a song and a saying out there that says, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And if each one of us claims that warriorship, that peace, that activism within ourselves, and then we give that to our family through an interchange of, of ideas and thoughts. And then if we move that out into our communities and our cities and those elected officials and our expectations of how we go forward uh, by just transitions into renewable energies rather than, than to use fossil fuels consistently and by building awareness there has to be a call out to those people who are ensuring those uh, pipelines going through our territory and telling them we, we demand that the banks divest. Uh, there's a, a thousand roads that take us into a new way of relationship with our mother earth. Or there's a path of destruction that humans can go on until we are simply eliminated as a part of this sacred circle of life. Our mother earth will endure. And all of the things that are living in balance with her will endure. So if humans want to continue to be part of that, recognize that you are nature. You are not separate from, you're not superior to. You are nature. You eat, you drink, you breathe. And that connects you to a cellular level as well as through your spirit and your well being. So start with yourself. What is it that you're going to do? You're going to recognize that plastics come from fossil fuels. Let's, let's use that as an example. 
and you're going to begin a campaign first with yourself not to use uh, single use plastics that you're going to educate your family and your friends that that is part of the problem and how are we going to change it you're going to recycle you're going to grow a garden you're going to eat from one plant you can grow on your patio you're going to demand that there is a different approach to how we go forward not only of of your so-called leaders but be that leader and change things uh, it's not as difficult as we try to make it. We just try to hand off our problem to somebody else and say, it's your fault. You're the one that's making me live this way. You know, take responsibility, personal responsibility. And if a friend in uh, South America needs you to support her, you can do that. You can create those things online that are not only awareness building, but maybe that's going to give her a hand to be able to pay bills that month so she can concentrate on doing the hard work in her community. But you all know how to do that. The deal is for you to do it. Don't ask. You're here today. That means that you already have a way forward. Believe in yourself and go for it. É, bom, ela, a Casey já disse tudo. Well, ela, Casey already said everything. She has huge wisdom and experience of fighting. And she's already seen the people suffering everything that we are suffering now from colonization. And to, to fight this is very hard. But when we, when I, as a woman, as a mother, when I'm seen as a indigenous leader, how I've been taking care of myself, how my community has been taking care of themselves, against all this pressure, against globalization. What has taken care of indigenous people in the face of all these threats, in my view, is our way of living. Our way of living there's there's no recipe like let's let's take care of ourselves like this no we live the fight our fight is to survive and our our self care is like i said before our self care we've been prepared since we were babies since we were born since we were Since we were in the belly of our mothers, we've been prepared. And when we are born, our first contact with, with medicinal plants, we live nature. That's what protects us. That's what keeps us alive and strong to fight against all the threats. Of course, that with time, we've seen changes. But we also use these technologies that have been invented and have been inserted into our, our life to survive. That's what we're doing today. We're using technology to denounce what has been happening to us, to show our way of living, and to ask for help to ask that everyone see, sees us and listen to our voices. That's it. 
we simply resist. And every indigenous person, they're resilient, they're resistant. We're in a constant fight for survival. And now I give you a provocation. If we indigenous people, traditional people and communities, and I will put here quilombolas as well, the people, the world, see and listen. And so we are attacked. Can you imagine nature? A lot of us are being disconnected, are not seeing, are not listening. And when we, when I say we, I, I speak about the human, the humans, human beings who are getting disconnected from nature. And we are here to make that connection happen again, to connect human beings to nature. And nature are us, nature is us. I hope that I had express myself well to show how us indigenous have taken care of ourselves in the front lines of the these threats that we face every day. Thank you so much, Peggy. Obrigada, Maya. It was really inspiring and beautiful to be here with both of you and Alejandra and Mayana, my sisters. So I'm really glad to, to be able to be this platform to connect the US and the indigenous struggles there with Brazil and the indigenous struggles here and with the UK. So I think uh, this is the, the way we should move forward. So, uh, I'm already thinking about ideas and we have some plans about how to exchange with uh, indigenous people in North America and to strengthen uh, the indigenous people here in, in the Amazon in Brazil. So uh, we hope we can count on uh, each one of you that were here with us this evening for most of you. <laughs> And uh, don't forget to, to donate. It is very important to support the work that we are doing and that this documentary is spreading all over the world in many of these lives. So thank you very much for staying with us. And I hope we can join uh, and some strengths even more after this meeting. Thanks a lot, Ale, Mayana, Maya Lu. Pachi for making the translation and everyone who was here with us. Thank you very much. Muito obrigada. Muito obrigada.